Here's a C major scale. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. And here's a C major scale with each note numbered. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. Pay special attention to these particular notes. If you can read at a kindergarten level, you would deduce that these are the 2, 5, 1 notes. Now here's the C major scale in triads. C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B minor, major, and C major. All these chords are diatonic, meaning they only have notes from the C major scale. Notice how the 2 chord is minor, the 5 chord is major, and the 1 chord is major, giving us a minor 2, a major 5, and a major 1. Now you know the 2, 5, 1. Congratulations! Go forth and prosper on your journey into jazz. You have very, 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 very big shoes to fill. Oh? You want more? Well, someone's greedy. Level 1. Basic chords. Let's take our 2, 5, 1 root notes and turn them into chords. We'll start with triads, or three note chords. Now jazz musicians are lazy, so these huge jumps between chords are a no-no. Let's invert them. Much better. Now let's add melodies on top of these chords. You can use notes from the C major scale, the C pentatonic scale, or the C blues scale. You can also play crush notes and chords in the right hand for extra seasoning. Mix up rhythms in both hands to prove to people you can multitask. If you're not lazy and have the work ethic of my kitchen fire alarm, you can try playing stride piano and jump from bass root notes and octaves to these inverted chords. I can tell by your expression that you're still dissatisfied. Well, fret not. I think I got just the stuff to scratch your itch. Level 2. Seventh chords. Let's convert a humble triad into an ostentatious seventh chord, which is the foundation of jazz music. But first, let's play a game. Corporate would like you to spot the difference between these two pictures. As you can see, we've added another third to each chord, all notes still in the C major scale, no sharps or flats. Here's what it sounds like. Once again, here are two 5 1 bass notes, our triads, and now here are our new 7th chords. Let's invert our 2nd chord so our hands don't move so much, allowing us to conserve energy for other. things. Let's hear what our melodies sound like now on top of these new chords. Two five ones are starting to sound like real jazz. We can go even deeper. Level three, chord extensions. Are you tired of your seventh chords sounding dull and cliche? Do your friends and family make fun of you because your jazz chords put them to sleep? Did your girlfriend leave you because your two five one has lost its spark, doesn't satisfy anymore, and can't compare to a chord progression with a bigger pianist? Well, I've got just the thing for you. Let's take our ostentatious seventh chord and make it so flashy that it gets arrested if ever played at a public park. Extended chords are exactly what the name implies. We can keep extending our chord to create more colorful harmonies, add more tension, or win our girlfriends back. Let's hear some examples. Finding extended chords can be intimidating at first, so start with adding 6th and 9th to your 7th chords. Then eventually, you can add flat 9ths, 11th, 13th, sus 2, eventually sus 4, slash chords, alter chords, sharp 13ths, ruthless voicings, stacked 4ths, and the list goes on and on and on. Piece of cake, right? You can do it! We can play these extended chords with both hands and mix up the rhythms for more flavor. Oh, <laughs> 
Oh, that's tasty stuff. Congratulations on making it this far into the video, but that's all I've got for you today. Still don't believe me? Alright, let's change it up. Level 4. Modulation with 251s. We can use 251s to modulate or change keys in our improvisation. First, we can utilize the concept of common chords, also called pivot chords, which are chords shared by the home key and target key. If we take a look at the C scale and G scale, they have these chords in common, meaning we can abuse them and force our way into the new target key. I'm kidding, make sure you always get the new target key's concept before modulating into it. Here's an example of a 2-5-1 chord progression using pivot chords from C to G. Going back to C is even easier. We just have to change the G major 7 to G7, which is the 5 of C as we already know. And that takes us smoothly back into the key of C. Now if we don't have common chords between two very different keys, don't even sweat it. We can use borrowed chords to sneakily slide into the target key's DMs. Going from C to E flat, we can borrow the F minor chord and B flat major chord from E flat to use it to lead into the key of E flat. Wow, that, I mean that's hot. There are countless ways to modulate using 251s, and I'll make a more in depth video in the future, but I think this is a good start. Well now you know how to create colorful chords and transition to new keys, but instead of playing 251s over and over again, let's introduce other chords and start forming chord progressions. Level 5, 251 Chord Progressions We've been focusing on the 251 chords, but let's revisit the harmonic C major scale. We have all these other chords in our toolbox we can use, and use we shall. First, a quick theory lesson. The strongest resolution in jazz music is a dominant resolving to a tonic, otherwise known as a 5-1 progression. Now this is why the 2-5-1 sounds so good. D is the 5 of G, and G is the 5 of C. They're just two sets of 5-1 progressions. If we keep following this logic, we can work backwards to find our next chord. Well, what's the 5 of D? Well, it's A. And would you look at that? It's a diatonic chord in C major scale, specifically the minor 6 chord. So now we have a 6-2-5-1 progression in this familiar tune. Fly Me to the Moon actually has two sets of 6-2-5-1s in the chorus, one in the key of C major and one in the key of A minor. Let's make it even more intricate by adding the 5 of A which is, yep, that's exactly right, it's E, which gives us this new chord progression, 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. Another thing you can do is replace the 2 chord with a 4 chord for a more major sound. There are three primary reasons why this makes logical sense musically. First, F major is diatonic in the key of C. Secondly, F is only two semitones away from G, making it a good leading tone into the G chord. Thirdly, an F major triad is actually in the D minor 7 chord. Similarly, the F major 7 is inside the D minor 9 chord. If we remove the D, we call this a rootless voicing because we've removed the root D of the chord. We can use what we've learned previously about modulating to make this progression cyclical by landing on the 1 chord and then making it a dominant 7 chord, which leads back into the F chord, thus restarting our 4-5-1 progression. Listen. I'm a classically trained musician who self-taught myself jazz, and what really kickstart my journey into improv was learning the 2-5-1 chord progression. Now I know there are countless 2-5-1 tutorials out there by musicians way more qualified than me. 
I just really, really wanted to share my humble perspective and limited knowledge on one of my favorite jazz concepts with you guys. I hope I've given you enough resources so you can start playing 251s, modulating using extended chords, and creating your own compositions. I know firsthand just how difficult jazz and improv is, but practice, 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 and I promise you, I promise you, it gets a little bit easier every day. Please stay tuned for more music, for more compositions, covers, tutorials, and let's make it a goal to play music every single day of our lives. One of my favorite quotes is, if art is how we decorate space, the music is how we decorate time. So let's decorate some time together. Thank you, and I hope you have a good day.